to it at this point. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp isn't seeing in Fabinho what we're all seeing in Fabinho. I, he just, he, he, just as Kev said there, he took time though, and you're, you're you know, you're at the stage of the season when uh, you, you you can't really be making risky decisions. And Henderson is he's still a very solid performer. What you see is what you get. Club captain, he's a very inspirational figure. Um, carries that captain's responsibility from the odd games I've gone to this season. You can see what it means to Henderson after the Burnley game. He was three or four minutes going around clapping all the fans um, after the game, and he, he you know, he's. His article in the match program was very much about the beauty of the club and imploring people to go to the the Sean uh, Sean Cox fundraiser f fundraiser and lots of stuff. Um, you know, Fabinho's probably a better footballer than him, but he's he's been a slow burner. He's he's definitely improved as the season has gone on, and um, but it's it probably isn't the easiest decision. And you have that just. As Kev says, he's, he's maybe elements of Seamus Coleman about this as well. If there's a debate about Seamus Coleman being captain, captain is captain, and uh, um, I, I think Klopp probably has massive time for Henderson in terms of that hunger that he brings to the pitch in, in a team that for a while maybe didn't have an awful lot of leaders or winners on it. Like Henderson is, he's a great attitude, and um, for the next what have we got six or seven games left. It's going to be very interesting to see how he goes. Wolves against Manchester United tonight at seven forty-five. We touched on the top four race at the top of the show. How much of a disaster would it be for United to not win the Champions League and not make the top four? Is it even is it even a disaster given they've managed to get things back on an even keel somewhat? Yeah, with it's it's not it's not a disaster um, because when he got the job, they you know it, it looked it looked pretty unlikely that that was going to happen. They needed to go on a run. Um, now the flip side of that is they have the talent and the resources and the wage will such that they should be at the very least competing for top four <coughs> and. Uh, uh, I have a slight concern about how the season will end for them now because Solskjaer has has the job and the narrative has changed a bit and that he knows now he's there and uh, the players know that he's there. Uh, will that change just, even though they don't realise it, will that change? Did Ireland's, did Ireland's rugby season change a bit when the, the, the succession was confirmed and Joe Schmidt, they knew the, that he was gone at the end of the year? I don't know, but I, I think manager, managerial um, kind of things in the background can have an effect on players and uh, funny enough, they, they, when they played Wolves in the Cup, it was coming after, I think, I'm pretty sure it was the Saturday after the second leg against PSG and they were absolutely atrocious in that game. So we'll see how they will be tonight. Not actually playing that well, didn't play that well on Saturday at the moment. Uh, I, I, I think this is very tough. I see the betting Wolves are 3-1, to one, Man United are even money. I can't see, I, that makes no sense to me. Like, What do Wolves have to do to be recognised as a good team that they are, with home advantage? Um, I think they have, a, they have a big chance of beating Man United tonight. Uh, I'm just not sure, will things change a little bit with Solskjaer having gotten the job, but um, forget about the Champions League really, they need to get top four and after that it's a, it's a very successful season for them. It's top four is where it's at. The, once that doing the rounds from Saturday against Watford, the, the goals from Rashford and Martial have both taken them to 10 in the league this season. So they joined Lukaku and Pogba on double digits for this season. Now this is the first time that that's happened with four players double uh, in double digits uh, since the 95-96 season. And it was Skulls, Cantona, Giggs and Andy Cole uh, who did it for them on that occasion. Like you can say it as, well you know, Lukaku had, had a desperate start to the season, was poor so they've had to get goals from all different areas and number nine wasn't doing the business for them. Or you could say Solskjaer has stumbled upon an attack that has threats in every single area and giving him a full season now next year uh, allows them to become one of the more terrifying attacks in the Premier League. Oh, 100%. And that's like that's the whole thing about Manchester City as well. They're, they've, they've so, if you're setting up defensively and you know that on the break you have four players that are hitting double figures in a season. And, I mean, Lukaku could easily hit 20 goals if he was playing regularly. He certainly steamrolled the flat-track bully against the, uh, the weaker teams. It's very hard to defend against that. Um, and I suppose... Looking at the League of Ireland this season, that's the one thing about Shamrock Rovers. You're like, are they really going to score enough goals? Do they have enough goals from other areas? Whereas Dundalk do have a lot of attacking players that can score goals. And Man United can certainly... I still think Solskjaer doesn't exactly know what his best kind of system is. And he, he deserves time to have that. But on the break, they're frightening prospects. And that first goal on Saturday, the beautiful simplicity of the ball from Shaw... Stuff like that. That that that's going back to base there, where you've basically players that are able to attack at pace, and um, it's it's a it's a lovely thing for them to look forward to next season to have those four players as options and to be able to mix it up as well. Mm. Like, what's your kind of sense on how this top four is going to finish? It seems at this point that Chelsea are the team that everybody's saying, well, they're going to finish six. They're up against Brighton tomorrow night at seven forty-five, and I wonder, in sort of a very weird way. 
the mutiny has gone on for so long at this point that they've actually just got used to being completely screwed. It seems that Sari was a dead man walking a long, long time ago, and he's still there. I don't know how he's managed to survive, and I wonder if they're just going to absolutely bear the brunt of this and see the season out with a manager who doesn't want to be there because the players hate him and vice versa, and they'll actually just get on with it and put together some sort of purple patch. Yeah, um, I don't know if the players hate him as well. I think there's... Uh, it's probably a bit of player power as well. Back in the day, you just... You just you might question your manager, but you perform for him. The, pro- the problem with the problem with them is they have obviously they have played thirty one games. Arsenal going into it. it it's <coughs> I. It's kind of like the playoffs in England, where the team that finishes third should be the team that finishes sixth, but generally doesn't because of the psychology of not being in the top two and the sixth place team scraping into sixth and thinking this is great. And you just wonder what Spurs, the form they're in, and like where where is this going with them? I honestly don't know how to call it. I. I would have grave reservations about Spurs. Are they going to limp over the line? I think their form is so bad that they definitely could slip. The Chelsea situation is a mystery to me. I, I, I don't know what's going on with Hazard. Um, will they help and get Sarri you know, over the line? I honestly don't know. You've got to be worried about Arsenal as well, which seems a strange thing to say given their current form. But you look at their away fixtures that are left, and they don't play any of the big six. But really, it's Wolves, Watford, Burnley, Leicester and Everton all on the road. Mm. Everton this weekend is first up. I mean, every single one of those fixtures from an Arsenal perspective you're looking at, banana skin, banana skin, banana skin. Yeah, and I, th- I think Dan McDonald's an article in the Argentine today saying that Chelsea like have a kind of a, a really sort of doable out in terms of the Champions League in the Europa League and they may put their eggs in that basket. Arsenal haven't been all that convincing. Um, last night's win was massive. I know they completely dominated the game and Newcastle probably offered nothing really going forward. Um, I wouldn't trust them on the road, though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really trust them. I know they've. I, yeah, I just. I, I. I don't know. I. I probably have more faith in Man United getting Solskjaer over the line than the other three. They're the only team at the moment in that top four race that you can say that you don't not trust. As in, you trust them a little bit, Manchester United. Just but when Arsenal with Chelsea and Spurs, you're like. But yeah. they all have doubts. on. like Man- yeah. Manchester United have now. The Solskjaer has gotten the job. Would you be confident that Manchester United beating Wolves tonight or even playing that well? I'd be more confident than any of the other three. Uh, yeah, probably. It's strange that you have so many doubts about four teams going for two massive positions at this stage of the season, four of the best teams. Um, and still doubts about Liverpool as well, I think. Mm. And to an extent, Man City, but certainly Liverpool. Yeah, it's been uh, great. Like the, the, the chasm is ever growing between the top six and the rest, they say. But I mean, you look at these fixtures and you're thinking there's just as good a chance when the mid table teams host any of these top six for taking points off them. Yeah, like look at, looking at Liverpool as well, their, uh, their, their fixtures. Um, I, I, you know, they go, they go to the couple of games they have where I know they, they've gotten um, the, the top teams out of the way now, but a couple of their fixtures, you're like, I'm not sure I'd trust them to win there. And it's going to be a really, really interesting end of the season. They, probably the relegation thing looks a bit sort now. Cardiff don't really, I don't think they have it in them to win. The, they've tough fixtures as well left, but uh, they, they're, it's really fascinating at the top. And uh, the only thing I think will happen, I think Liverpool have, have blown it. Um, but other than that, I couldn't really predict anything. 